detail. I'm just saying use um, basic SOLIDWORKS. And this is start a brand new file. When you start a new file, you get these three options. We looked at these last week. A part file, an assembly, and a drawing. We then do our second part. So we click on part and hit OK. And we'll joke about this. We'll have a party when I get back, OK? All right, here we go. What we're gonna do first is you guys are gonna be numbers. Go ahead and start a sketch and then activate your sketch. Remember you have to hit the sketch tab and then you have to turn on the sketch. Then you're gonna get your three drawing planes. I want you to be on the right plane, not the bottom, not the top, not the front, not the back, right. Okay, let's go ahead and click on that once. It'll spring around, it says right plane. There's your origin right in the middle. Okay, so we got that. This is a new sketch, right? Yeah, brand new sketch, new file. It's a new drawing file. Do not draw this with the base, it's a separate file. You have to start a new file. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. Okay, you can see this column? Yeah, I think right, this, so. This is what we then draw. This is the right side view, and this is what we then draw. So we then draw, our first line is gonna be not six inches, okay? So we've got um, a total height of six inches, but the, the flag on this, comes down 1.875 inches. So we're just gonna draw a basic shape that looks like a letter, a number seven, and then we'll come back and put the details on it. We're not gonna any size at all to start, okay? So I'm gonna switch this down, and then go back to my drawing here. And you guys are all with me here still, right? Yes. Okay, so I do a line and I'm on the right side plane. I start the origin point and this and drag drag a line from the origin straight up. Oh no, better make it straight. Then I draw a line over. So you have a line connecting. Bring a line down. Uh -huh. Just create the shape. You can fix it if you mess it up. I'll mess it up. How about that? There's a mess up. Okay, remember we talked last time that if we need a line to be horizontal and vertical, we can add those constraints. So you select the line and you force it to the shape you want it to be. Just create this shape. And then add vertical or horizontal constraints as needed. And we'll just let you figure that out for just a minute. Look on your neighbor's screen so you can see what's on here. If you're one that's not in Zoom right now, I'll see if we can get more bandwidth so we don't have this happen again on uh, Thursday when we do the more complicated drawings. Griffin, did you make it back in okay? Yes, yes. Good deal. Okay, has everybody got this shape drawn? Yes. Excellent. Now we're then going to put sizes to it. So I know that the base of my columns be one inch. The total height here is two, and the very tallest from bottom to top is six. So we're gonna do that first. So then do a smart dimension, right up here by your sketch features. Select the bottom horizontal line and make that one. Just type in one and enter when you select that dimension. So one, enter. On the longest vertical line, make that one six. And on the face of the flag portion, make that two. 
Oh my gosh. Pretty cool stuff, huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Dobby. Okay, now we're gonna do some rounding. We're gonna do some fillets. So let's take a look at the fillets we need to do on here. On the back, what's that? This rounded back arc here. Can you see the drawing of the column here? So then do two fillets. One is three eighths of an inch. The other is a one inch radius. So here we go. Up in your, what's up? Where'd I go? Okay. Just seeing your, um, I think this is a column. I'll be okay. that in chat. If you'll turn off your smart dimensions, then go over into the draw tools and go to where you have the sketch fillet. You'll select that tool and you'll set the radius for the first one to 0 0.375. That's three eighths of an inch. This will be a constraint. And we then do this inside corner. This is a true fillet. It's an inside corner. So we're gonna go from the bottom horizontal of the flag down to the inside leg. You then get a yellow preview for that. Once you get the yellow preview, go ahead and check the green check mark or press enter or the right mouse button. Any of those will work. So now I have a little 3 8 inch fillet. Okay, so a fillet by definition is the inside corner. And so if you ever see that come up with the machinist and you're working on doing metal work, the inside corner is the fillet. Okay, now we're going to do what's called a round. It's done with the fillet command as well. You need to change your radius on the left hand side to one. So then do a full inch. Now we're gonna select the topmost horizontal line and our back tallest vertical line. We're gonna round that portion off. When you get that preview where you want it, get the green check mark, right click or hit the enter key. So now we've created the basic profile of what our column's going to be. Let me bring the drawing back up on the screen. So we have created this basic shape so far. Um, we also have a couple of things happening here. We have two inset holes here. And what we want to do is kind of look at what's being asked. Um, first thing is, is this note right down here in this area. Bring that up again. That's fun. So right here we have a diameter of a half inch. That's the inside hole and it goes all the way through the column. Then we have what looks like a staple laying down a piece of paper here. That's called a counter bore. So what that is, it's a hole that doesn't go all the way through. It's generally used because we're gonna put something inside of there so it's recessed and not interfering with the surface of the part. Typically, you'll see it done with like the bolt head. Um, so if you have a hex head bolt, we want that hex part to be down beneath the surface. We'll do a counter bore. This counter bore has a diameter of 1.172 at its maximum, or it could be as small as 1.168. The depth of that hole is 0.776, okay? So that's what we're gonna be doing next is creating these two circles. And those two circles are really, really gonna be important that you get them correct. That's why we're on the right side plane so that we have all of the information we need as we do that. Uh, we know the center of the circle is one and a 16th from the front edge and down one inch. So we have that. And we wanna make sure we have everything correct for our drawing. Okay, does everybody see those numbers? Okay, because you're gonna have to, re you're gonna have to rebuild these numbers at some point. 
So here we go. This gets older. We can't see your screen. You can't see the screen? Can you, you see it now? Okay, that's why I had you that's why I had you go into your course and look at the picture there, because I wasn't sure I could share both. Let me <laughs> let me do that then. We'll try this. We'll share that drawing. Okay. This drawing right here. Okay. So what I was talking about is right here. This value right here. We're talking about these two circles on the side of the column. The first one is this half inch diameter hole that has the word through on it. That means this little hole goes all the way through the column. Then we have this little staple shape. It can be as large as 1.172, but not smaller than 1.168. And the depth is 0.776. You guys are gonna design a gear that's gonna stick, stick inside of this, okay? So we have a gear that goes in there. All right, let's go ahead and create that. So I'm gonna stop sharing this and start sharing the other. Okay, we all good now? No, it's all quiet. It's all good when it's quiet. Got it. All right. We got a little bit of a problem here, folks. How wide is our column? Do you remember that? Get that number? 3.5. Yeah. So we didn't put that number in. So I need to do that. And it's a smart dimension from the back to the front. We need to put that in first. Make sure we get that value in. That looks a little better. Okay. Now I'm going to go into the circle command. Right here is our circle command. We then use the center and the radius option. So I'm just going to start a circle somewhere on this face, this gray face. Doesn't matter exactly where. Draw one circle there. And then do another circle at the exact same center point. It's a little larger. So I have two circles that are concentric, meaning they have the same center point. So two concentric circles. Hey, and I guess, thanks again for dealing with all the tech stuff. I will definitely be back next week for sure. Um, so thank you for bearing with our COVID year. Gotta love it. Okay, now we have two circles. We're gonna put the location of these circles first. Then we'll worry about size. Since they both have the same center point, we can move them both at the same time. If you did not get them the same, we'll fix that, okay? It's pretty easy to do. So back to our smart dimension. From the top horizontal bar line to the center point, that value is one inch. Just one and enter. I'm sorry. If you make a mistake, go back and edit. Okay, one inch. Let's drop it down one inch. From the front vertical line to the center, that value is one and one sixteenth. That's 1.0625. 1 1.0625, one and one sixteenth. That shifts it over. So now the location of both of these holes is established. If I was to have this done out of aluminum, my machinist would need to know these two numbers. The rest of the numbers are set into the size of the drill bit. It's going to create them. Does it help to see it on computer screens next to you? Is that easier to see? Okay, so we'll keep we'll do this again on Thursday. We'll just have every other student log in so they don't crash out. That was crazy. And, and maybe the power system will be up better. We have our towers back. All right, now we need the size of these circles. What's the size of the inside circle? Um, the, the one that goes all the way through. Should be like 0.5. Right? 
Yes. <laughs> so select the circle edge, bring out a dimension. Now you can do it inside, you can pull it to the side, pull it on top, bring it out as an arrow. This is a leader. You can put the arrow wherever you want. I don't care, it doesn't matter. But make it 0.5 and enter. Okay, now the outmost circle, we were given two sizes for it. We had the 1.172 and, one, and the 1.168. We always make the hole in our drawings the larger size because if the metal shrinks because it's cold, then it'll go to the smaller size. But we always design to the larger size. That's called the maximum material condition. It won't be the maximum conditions. So now we select the second larger circle. Now bring that up so you can see it a little better. Make that one decimal one seven two, and enter that in. And now we need to make a 3D object. Okay, so this is gonna get a little tricky on you. So here we go. Everybody ready? Good. And let's take that as a yes, sir. Go ahead and click on your features tab, upper right hand, upper left hand corner. Click on features. And we're going to do extrude boss base. Okay. Now, the order in which you do this is really, really important. We have three sketches in one. We have the perimeter of the column. Then we have the two circles. And notice if you float over those, you can highlight them all distinctly individual. So we have three sketches in one. We want to use all of those sketches at once. Okay, the first sketch we're gonna use is the column. We're gonna make the column itself complete. So if you look on your left-hand side of your panel, there's a blue box that says selected contours. We're gonna select all three contours. This is a little bit more advanced but it gives you a little more power over your drawing. So we're gonna select the main column, the inside larger circle, and then the circle itself. Now, if you look at which way my arrow is pointing here, it's going to my right. I need it to go to the left. So if you come over here to direction one on the left-hand side of your screen, you'll see the word blind. To the left of that is a toggle arrow. Click that once and send this going the other direction. That'll flip your arrow. It just toggles back and forth. But you want the arrow to face towards the, le the left is where we're going with that. Okay. And what we're gonna do is this is not a full inch thick. Okay, it's a little thinner. It's gotta fit inside the base in that slot that we have to finish still. So your distance, come down from blind down to where the distance one is. And we're gonna change that 0.1 to 0.98. Make it 0.98. If you click in the non area, you'll see that extrude out. Then go ahead and hit your green check mark. And we now have a solid chunk of aluminum. Aluminium, if you will. Okay. Now, if you did not get this, please let me know. And if you would help your neighbors that are struggling, if you need to whack them in the back of the head, do that. Keep them awake. But let's make sure everybody's here. Okay. Make sure we get to this point. And uh, happy Star Trek Day, everybody. Okay, we ready for the next step? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. If we'll go now over to your left side panel, you'll see where it says Boss Extrude 1. You see that? If you double click on that, It'll highlight it blue, but you also get sketch, in my case, two, because I screwed up 
on mine. But if you right click, you can actually rename that item. So when you right click on Boss Extrude One, go down to say rename tree item. This is your document tree and give it the name column. Okay, and just rename it so you know how to do that. The reason you want to do that is you want to name um, elements or features so that you can find them quickly. It's not uncommon for a student, as, especially as they work on the lightsaber project, which you guys are all looking forward to, um, to have 99 layers or different features. Uh, and if you name them, it makes it a lot easier to find them, okay? Now, below that, if you hit that little arrow behind and expand it out, yours should, stay, should say sketch one. Mine says sketch two because I screwed up. That's okay, I'm not gonna use it right now. I'm gonna manipulate that sketch to do something kind of de devilish with it. Okay, so I'm gonna click off my screen right now, expand sketch two out so you can see it. Click in the drawing area, and then we're gonna go up into your features, and I want you to find extrude cut. Find extrude cut. Click on that. You're gonna get a yellow warning label. Yellow is really important in SOLIDWORKS. It means uh, you need to pay attention to what you're about to do. Uh, make sure you know what you're doing. It says select a plane, a planar face, or an edge on which to sketch or an existing sketch feature. Okay, now remember that sketch one or sketch two that you have? I can't see it here anymore. It's gone. I still need it. So that, that file tree is now on your drawing. It's up here, it says part one. If you hit this down arrow to the left of that, there's that structural tree. It's there on the fly for you. And then hit my column and expand that out. There's my sketch. So I'm gonna select that sketch number one or number two, or for some of you it's probably number three. Select that. Now I can see those circles. And what I want you to do first is do the innermost circle. Just highlight your cursor over there so it shades in. And we're gonna change this from blind on the left, where it says direction one. Change it from blind. Oh my goodness, look at those options. I can go through all. I can go through all both ways. I can go up to the next element, up to the next vertex, up to the next surface, offset from the surface, up to the next body or mid-plane it. With this, then go through all, because that's what the note said. So then do through all. Once you get that through all set, hit your green check mark, and you have a hole. Oh, shoot, hold on a second. Whoa. Redo that whole thing. Yeah, can you do the hole again? Yep, I can. All right, so here we go again. I'm going to go into my Features tab, and then do Extrude Cut. So anytime you make a circle, it can become a hole. It wants to know what I want to cut with. So I'm going to find my part name inside my drawing editor, and expand that out. I'm going to go down to my column feature. So this is a feature. And then expand that to see the sketches used to make it. And then find the sketch and then I click on that. Now that I can see that sketch, so I want the inside most circle. So I select that. I come back over to my left panel. Blind means you then set a distance for it. So I'm gonna change it from blind to through all. I want to go all the way through the part. Once I do that, all I have to do now is hit the green check mark. And then you get your hole. I have a question. I have this weird little slanty thing. Like a... Weird little what thing? His, his cursor has a... A funnel? No. It's a, it's a green check mark that's like with a little hole in it. Hmm. <laughs> Not one of these here. Green check mark with a hole in it. It's so... That is confusing. Let's see if I can reproduce that. <laughs> a green thing with a little hole. Man, that's a very vague description. Um, did, did he, was he able to create the hole? 
He made the hole. Oh no, he can't make the hole because the green check mark is the hole in it. Don't let him. Is there, is there a green check mark on the side panel? No, it's just right. It, it's just under the mouse. It's right under the mouse. It wow. almost said wherever it goes. Like a textbook. <laughs> so I can create that. Something like that. Is any of those the icon? No, it's like um it's like a type of check, but it's not green, it's blue, and it has like a circle in it. It's green. <laughs> well, I have not seen that before. Um, that's pretty neat. Try hitting your escape key. Okay. It's, gone now. it's gone now. Okay. I think you had a filter activated, and most likely it was the surf inside surface filter. So as long as you get this hole, you're good right now. Okay. All right. So here's my here's what my plan was today was that if you were all into Zoom, then I could have you share your screens with me so I could see what's happening. Um, I'm gonna try and get to that point eventually, but we'll be back before I get that fixed. All right, we have one more hole to cut, guys. We've got to cut that bigger hole, and we're gonna do it the same way. Now I'm gonna rotate this around a little bit. You do that by pushing the roller button in on your mouse, so you can roll that around. But I'm gonna go, it's kind of fun. Don't get too lost, okay? Be, be gentle with it. All right, and then go back into my features tab and right back to extrude cut again. Same yellow box. Look at my structural tree now, my, my feature tree. I've got a column, there's my sketch, but now I've got a new feature. That's this extrude cut that went through. So, and it's number two because I redid it for you. I'm gonna go back to the sketch that's part of column. And I use that same sketch again. So when you make your sketches on a side view, you want as much detail as you can get into them because you can reuse that information over and over and over again. Uh, so I click on sketch two. There's my circles. Again, I wanna highlight the outer circle this time. This time you'll then leave it on blind. And the distance you're gonna go is 0 0.776. I'm gonna turn this and when I click on this unused area down here at the bottom, it'll give me a preview of how deep that sketch is cut is going. So I'm not cutting all the way through, and then leave, leave a wall that's almost a quarter of an inch thick. And when I hit the green check mark or enter, now I've got this concave recession cut. Okay, so you don't have to cut through something all the way. Now, when we get going, I'm also gonna have you guys make some molds um, using silicone. It's a little messy, so the day we do that, wear garbage clothes, because you cannot get silicone out of clothing, okay? So that'll be next quarter, and I'll give you a heads up on that. Okay, so we've got this right side of, my, of our column completely done. We now need to have you change views, okay? So if you'll go up to the top, right above your column, find your view orientation cube, and go to your top view. And we're gonna work on this surface next, okay? So I'm gonna bring up the other, um, the other sheet here, so you can see that. Okay, so here's our drawing again. Our top view is right here. We're gonna draw this slot <coughs> next. Now that slot is not centered. It looks like it is, but it's not, okay? So this is one of the things that can cause you some grief. Because we're putting a gear inside of there, we need the gear, the teeth to line up with what's called a rack. We're then do a little rack and pinion gear inside of there. They may know what a rack and pinion gear is. A 
What you think from that? Nobody? Where where do you have a rack and pinion that you'd use every day? Our cars. Your cars. What part of the car? Oh, I do. Steering wheel. You turn the steering wheel to the right, it makes your wheels turn. But that column that's turning goes straight forward down through your dash. And we use a rack and pinion there to make that turn happen. Okay, so we're gonna work on this portion right here. We're gonna make this little slot and then I cut through. And then we gotta come down and do this little area down here. And in the front, we've got to put in four holes. And after we do these four holes, then then go back to your base drawing and we're gonna finish that out, okay? So we're gonna learn a lot off this drawing. So we've done some sketching, we've done some constraints, done some fillets, we've done your first cuts. Now we're gonna do a few more cuts and then we're gonna do some, some magic, some cool magic, okay? All right, stop in this chair and we'll go back. Well, here we go. You guys get ready. All right, so we're going back in the sketch tab. Okay. And start your sketch and you get a yellow box. Now the shell box says, where are you gonna draw? The reason I had you get your view set up first is you need to tell it where you're drawing. I wanna draw on the top of this column. So bring your cursor and just select the top portion. Don't get this round area. You cannot draw on a rounded surface, okay? So just kind of put that in your memory. You cannot draw on a rounded surface. It has to be a flat surface. So I click there. There's my origin. That's where we started the drawing. So that's where we were at. This is my where I'm gonna draw. I wanna draw this as simply as possible. So in your draw tools is a corner rectangle. Now that corner rectangle has various options. There's a center, there's a three point um, corner, three point center and a parallelogram. We're just gonna do a regular rectangle. Just come on your drawing, pick a point and then drag it down anywhere it comes off the front edge. Just put a rectangle in something like that. We're gonna manipulate this rectangle. If it comes off the front, that's fine because we're cutting that away. We wanna cut through this edge. So if it overhangs, it makes it a little easier. In SolidWorks, it's possible that you can leave a micrometer or less. You can go down to a nanometer. And what that does, it leaves like a little thin skin that can throw your drawing off. So it's always better if you cut through an edge, make your object a little larger that's cutting, so you get a clean cut. Okay. Now I'm gonna throw some dimensions on there. So back to our smart dimension. From the front edge of the column to the back of the rectangle, or the top in this case, depending on your point of view, once you make that distance five eighths of an inch, that's 0.625 in decimal value. Oh, wow, that's just a little teeny tiny bit. That's not very much at all. From the right side to, the, to your rectangle, so then go from the edge to the rectangle, that value is 0.25, like that. Now, the width of this column is 0.98. So this right side cannot be 0.25. There's not enough math to make that work. So I need to know the width of the rectangle now. So you need to use the bottom line horizontal or the top horizontal, this is the top, and we're gonna make that value 0 0.505, 0 0.505, then you can hit this little check mark, and that's our opening. So this is just slightly smaller than a quarter of an inch, just a little bit. Okay. I'll give you a second to get that all so you can see it. Hopefully this works better than looking at those TV screens. Um, I didn't realize how hard it was to see on those until we went to doing this. And um, I think I may try, try and find a way to broadcast your computers all the time now. It's a little easier for you. All right.
Um, anybody still working on this? Live chats. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, you want to make sure, sorry, Parker, I didn't catch that text that you were in metric instead of inches, pounds, and seconds. Um, okay, boy, I'm a little behind on these. Um, Riley, did you get your cut to work then? Okay, I'm going to assume we're all there. All right, sorry, I didn't have that chat room window open. I'll keep it open now if you guys have questions. All right, I'm going to roll my column. I'm going to press in the roller button and then just going to tip it up so I can see what I'm about to do. Then turn off the smart dimensions. And then go into my features tab and go to extrude cut. There's my thing. Now, because I'm going through the entire top portion of this column, I could go and change the blind to through all. That'll work. And notice if you do through all, it goes all the way to the bottom. If you change it to up to surface, you have to tell it what surface to go to. So I have to roll my column and pick the bottom surface, and I'll stop right there. Um, if you get working for like a um, Oh, if, I, if you go work for the company down in Utah County that makes oil pumps uh, for the oil rigs, you want to make sure you do this method because if you put another piece here underneath it, that cut will go through it as well. And so you want to kind of control the depth of your cuts. Um, that works pretty good. If I do a blind and put in the distance of two, that will work. It'll go all the way through. Um, or you can simply grab the arrow and pull it down to where you want it. So all you then do is make sure you go all the way through this front half of our column. And any method you use will work. So it has a split nose. Okay. So it should look like this when you get it all done. Notice we've cut into our circles. This is where the gear teeth will come into contact with the rack. That's Isn't that pretty? Pretty, 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 pretty. Want to take a break at nine? We had a twenty-minute technical delay. <laughs> Start this thing off. Um, yeah, we can do a break at. at um, Let's do one more feature. Let's do this bolt hold down at the bottom and then we'll take a break, okay? That way we'll get one thing done and then we can do that. All right, we're gonna change your view now. So go into your view orientation cube and let's go front. So this is our front view now, flip it all the way to the back view. So that's back view, so you know where you're at. And we're gonna work right down here in this area. Okay, so in the back view. Ivan really likes his breaks. I wonder if he goes to smoke or something. <laughs> Serious stuff there. All right, let's look at the drawing and get the numbers we need here real quick. So, look at all you guys in here, so great. Let's share. Share the screen. Share the screen. All right, we're looking at this. We're gonna create this kind of a hole down here on the bottom right view. Let's look at the front view. This is the notes we need, okay? Now this one is kind of centered, not really. It's coming from the side here um, and it's the same side that's a quarter inch. So we're kind of going opposite here to bounce out the column. So our hole that we have here, the one that goes all the way through is 0.39. Then it has a counterbore of 0.562 that has a depth of three eighths of an inch. And it is a half inch from each side as we look at that from the back view. 
So this is on the left here. If I look on the back, it's gonna be on the right corner is what we're coming from. Let me flip that around. So here we go. Yay team. Yay. Yay. All right, let's start with a circle. So need a sketch. Start the sketch, select the back of the column, the flat portion of the column. There's my origin, remembering a circle. Now there's a tricky little bugger here. This is pretty much centered, um, but this distance is not one inch. So if I come down here and I'll just show you this for now, we're not gonna use it for this column, but you need to know it. If I bring my cursor along an edge, I can find the midpoint. And if I project up, it'll keep those blue lines so you can keep things aligned without using dimensions. Okay, but we're not gonna do it that way. Mainly because it, um, it's not symmetrical, it's not one inch. Oh, Mufasa, again, you missed the class twice now because of alarms. I'm not calling you in the morning, son, because the way I wake my kids up with is a bowl of icy water. <laughs> be there. That'll be your next one. Welcome to class, Mufasa. Keep up. Okay. You have to watch the video. All right. Here we go. Circle. Two circles. Anywhere on this back. You want one and then do a. You don't have to go back and get again. You're still in the circle command. Notice the circle on my pencil. I can just draw a second circle right with it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna give sizes first. Smart dimension, inside is 0.39. Outside circle is gonna be um, 0.562. You can put a five on there, it's actually five eighths of an inch. 0.562, enter. So they're pretty close, they're not too different. Before we do our cuts, we need to position these. So from the left edge to the center is 0.5. And from the bottom to the center is also 0.5. Okay, so it is not, it's not in there in the exact center. It's kind of a, um, a little off center on this. All right, now we're ready to do some cuts. Yeah, wait, so it's from the center to the bottom and then over to the What's that? Yeah, it's a half inch from the, the left edge over from the bottom up. The inside circle is 0.39 inches. The outside is 0.5625. The inside circle is going to go all the way through. The outside circle is going to go in a depth of three eighths of an inch. With a high wind um, happening, we suggest that if you are parked by a tree in a parking lot, that you move your car um, to, a, to a spot away from a, a tree. Thank you. Is that any of you guys? <laughs> okay, here we go. We're going to cut this through real quick. Okay, so I'm going to go right into features. Extrude cut. I want to choose my areas. So I want just the inside circle. Set that to go through all. Now it's going to look going long like Pinocchio because it's going to go to the edge of the whole column. And that's fine. So let's just check that off. Yay. Sketch is gone. So again, extrude cut. Expand out my, my part tree all the way down to the bottom, find the sketch. In your case, it's probably three, mine's sketch four. You want to select just the outermost portion. You then change it to blind if it's not, and your depth, your distance, 0.375. And if you want to click down below here in the white area, you'll see the preview so that it doesn't go all the way through. And we check that off. Wait, where, what do we select? This point three seven five. The outer circle. 
So the distance between the inside. So on this, it would be this area right here between the two circles. Yep. So did you get this part? The insides? Well, I went way back. Okay. Okay, so we start. Always do the circle that goes all the way through first. So when you do those, so I'm going to do that with um, through all. So that inside circle there, the darker one, that's going all the way through. Then when I go back into extrude cut, I've got expand it out, go down to your bottom feature, and it'll have the sketch you used for that. And you can use it again, it carries those sketches forward. So if I expand all these out, there's three, there's two, and there's two again. So I can float over these sketches and see where I'm working. So I click on that sketch, and you wanna make sure you're just getting this outside surface. And that's the one that goes in 0.375. And you just check that off and that's what you get. All right, um, is that good? All right, let's give you guys um, 10 minutes. We're getting back at 9.15. That second cut goes in 0.375. Get back at 9.15 from your bathroom break. If you start your drawing and you notice that your sizes aren't quite working out right because you're not in inches, pounds, and seconds, but rather you're in kilometers, meters, and I think it's seconds. Um, if you go to the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, it'll tell you what units you're in. So in this case, I'm in IPS, but you can click that little arrow, maybe, and you can change your settings to meters, kilograms, and seconds, centimeter gram or second, millimeter gram or second, lots of, lots of metric, not so much imperial, but um, there's my imperial at the bottom, and that's what you wanna work in for this. And you can switch that as you go. You can also put in metric values while you're in inches and SOLIDWORKS will convert it and vice versa. You can put in metric model and they'll put in inches and convert that too. So it works both ways. It's kind of nice. Welcome back from your break, everybody. Hope you got done what you need to do. And it was as fun as you want it to be. <laughs> Whatever you guys do on your breaks, I don't know. Stand Don't worry about it. What's up? Don't worry about it. I won't. I imagine the pigeons are plenty occupied. All right. What we're going to do now is if you go to the front view on your column. So we'll go to view orientation, front view. On these two areas, oops, got too many there. One, two. Those two areas, there are four machine screw holes that need to be placed there, and they're threaded. And SOLIDWORKS is gonna do that for you. So we have to do it in a really, really specific way. And we then do it here first, and then we'll go back into the base drawing and put a threaded hole in the base as well. But we're gonna learn here, uh, mainly because it's a little more complex here, but I can also teach you how to do things a little more efficiently here too. So we're going to do the first hole. We're going to do it right here in the lower left portion of a column. Okay. So I'm going to zoom up a little bit. And this will be right here in this area. So I'm going to leave this screen for a minute and bring up our drawing so you can see what we're going to do. And uh, we're going to talk that through a little bit. And here we go. So we're going to. Click this back. All right, we're looking at this guy right here. And here is the note that goes with that. So it says I have four X. That means there's four of them. And we can see that there's one, two, three, and four. So four X means there's four. Um, they have a diameter of decimal one, three, six. And that's a metric size of 29. So in the parentheses is the metric. The depth 
on those is 0.69. And then we get a whole big epitaph of things going on below that. We have an 8-32. What that means is we have um, eight threads per inch in a 32 uniform coarse thread size 2b. 2b means it's an interior thread. And we'll look at these designations way more in detail um, next week with a depth of 0.44. So all that information is super needed. UNC uniform coarse threading, a 2b, it's not a minus 2b, it's just a dash. And then the depth on that 0.44, okay? All that's super, super important. And then we have to know the location of everything. So that's important too. So we're going to be an eighth of an inch from the edge on there. That's where we get from this point. The distance then between is we have to do some math. So I have to do um, from this edge to this one minus the 0.125, and then we have the 1.875 minus the 0.125 for the vertical. So we have to keep track of that as well. Okay, lots of numbers there, lots of information, and I know you can do it. So here we go. Ready? We got this. We got this, it's easy. It's <laughs> Okay, new command, new place. We're not doing this with circles. Because we want SOLIDWORKS to do the threading, and here's why. If we use this next tool and let SOLIDWORKS do all the hard stuff for us, when we put this together, SOLIDWORKS will create those machine screws for us. It'll just create them. It's kind of cool. All right, so across the top, we're in the Features tab. We're not going to start with a sketch. And then come across the top, I want you to find the whole wizard. You click on the whole wizard. It's going to take it a second to load that. Literally a second. It's kind of fast. And this is what we're going to create. Okay. Now, this is going to go a little slower with for this uh, second part of the class. Man, because there's a lot of things to keep track of and to get right. Okay. So when we look at the whole wizard, it gives us some images of what types of holes we're looking at. So we have counter bores. And in this case, we don't have a counter bore uh, because the machine screw is coming into this part. So we want the threads to engage the full length of the hole. So we're looking here, we have a, so we have a counter bore and a counter sink. A counter sink would be what you'd find made with wood screws. Some machine screws are, are um, cone shaped. So they go in there. Um, we have just a simple hole. We have a straight tap. We have um, a tap, taper tap. That, and then we have a legacy hole. Legacy means you design it yourself. So if it's a legacy hole, you have to design it all yourself. Then we get the bottom is all about slots. So kind of our slots. We've got a countersink slot and just a slot slot. Yay. We want to stay in ANSI inches here. Um, let's go and select uh, the straight tap is what we're doing here. So I do a straight tap hole. So that's um, second row, first one on the left. Stay down until morning, right? All right, now what we want to do is we come right on down. The bottom tapping hole is what we want. So and then do a bottom tap hole. Um, come down to the size. The size right now has a number 0 80 is the size that's given. We need an 8 32 for the size of the screw. So let's scroll down and find 8 32. We get that down, down arrow, 8 32. What does that mean? That has to do with the, the pitch and the coarseness of the threads. So the pitch is an eight pitch on the threading, and there's 32 um, threads per inch. So it's the size of the screw that's going into the hole. So if you were to take that to Home Depot or Lowe's, you could buy that screw. 
just a little machine screw. Kind of cool. We're going to do a lot of dissection of this here um, because some of you want to use fasteners on your lightsabers to make them a little more user friendly. All right, now we have the end condition. This is not a through all condition. Um, this is only going in um, 0.44. So let's change this to blind. And now I've got two different depths on here. So um, what you want to put in the first value, this distance is the 0.69, because that's how deep we then go with our thread. And then we come down here, the threaded distance is only 0.44. So our hole is deeper than our threading. And that's typical because the bottom end of a drill bit tends to be the one that gets beat up and the threads aren't as decent there. So we usually shoot in a little deeper than we want. Okay. Now we can keep the thread call out. We're gonna leave that. Um, go ahead and put a check mark by thread class if it's not there. And we wanna make sure it's a 2B. Okay, so we have a couple of them in there. 1B, 2B, and 3B. A 1B is an external thread, a 2B is an internal thread, and a 3B is not used in the United States. Um, it's kind of a, I don't, I don't know, we've never used it, so. I'll, I'll look it up and find it for you. I can't remember what 3B is. Okay, there's also a 1A and a 2A, and they have to do more with um, uh, standard wood screws. Okay, make sure it's a 2B. All right, now we've got our, we don't have a turn off the countersink if that's on, the near side countersink, we do not have that condition. And we are all good to go. And the precision's fine. All right, now, that's our settings. Any questions before we move on? Can you show us all the options for how to do the whole kit? Like, uh, what's it like? The, the options for the whole wizards? Like these guys? The whole wizard, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so the, what's up? I'm not sure what you want me to show you. Just do the whole wizard again. The whole thing? Boy, caramba. <laughs> All right. So up here in your features tab, we select whole wizard. That brings us the various types that we can create. We're going to create a straight tap. So we click on straight tap. Then we scroll down. We want to make sure an ANSI inch, that's American National Standards Institute inch, fasteners. We want to be a bottom tapped hole. The size is probably 0-80 on default when it first opens up. You want a number 8-32. That's a number 8 pitch, 32 threads per inch. What's that? We need to press the show custom sizing. Yeah, no, you don't need to do custom. Well, yeah, it gives you a little more options. Actually, you don't really need the custom sizing. Because oh, yes, no, you don't need it. Um, then you go, your end condition is blind. You then go in, you got to change my settings now because I switched off everything. Your full depth is 0. 0. 0.69. Oops, that won't work. 0.69, that's your depth of your hole. So we got to drill the hole in 0. 0.69. Then your thread, that distance there is 0. 0.44. And we want to make sure our thread class, 2B with no countersink. 2B, no countersink. 2B, no countersink. All right, we good? Hopefully. Are we good? We good, man. All right, here we go. Now, in order to in order to place it on our part, we have to go to position. 
So click on the position tab and it says what face. So we're going to place this um, right here in this lower left corner of the front of our column. Don't get down here or down here. Make sure you know where you're at. Right here in this position right here. It's going to give you a circle that just kind of floats around. That is the size of the hole. So just place it anywhere inside of that shaded area. Click once. Then right click and hit select. Because I don't want you to put any more on than the one. Once you get that one position, okay, that one little guy right there, go ahead and hit your check mark. And there's your hole. But it's not in the right place yet. The hole again. Yep, just, just click on it. Let me turn this around a little bit. Oh, it's not oh. You have to hit the green check mark. You want to let you pick on this surface right here? Positions tab. Do I have to press the 3D sketch? No, 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 no. When you get the positions tab, click on this surface, and then it will let you place it. And then right click? Yep, and then hit select, and then hit the green check mark. Let me get myself squared back up here with the front view. Okay, I need to get this first hole and see how it comes to a little conical end point here as if it's been drilled. The dotted line is where your threads will be. And it doesn't show the threads right now because it takes too much RAM. So it saves those until we get to the final product. So this dotted line represents how deep the threads will cut into the side of this hole. If you look on your left side panel, you'll see your number 832 tapered hole. I need you to expand that out so you can see all the files. So you have sketch five, followed by sketch six, and then you have the whole thread. Okay. If you go to sketch five and right click, I want you to go up above the eyeball and edit the sketch. Sketch five, edit sketch. That will leave you with an asterisk, a little star symbol. And that's all, that's all that's left of your hole right now. If you look on your left, you'll see the other areas are all grayed out. This is the exact center of that hole. And I need to position it so that it's in the center of this space. So I'm gonna use a smart dimension. From the edge to that star, I want you to make that 0.125. From the bottom to the star is also 0.125. That's looking a little scary. How come I can't find That can be can't what? Say that one more. Can you just repeat what you just did real quick? Yep. Okay. Whoa. Yep, I'm going to have to. And I think I'm going to have you all back out and redo it. I think I'm going to change the math on this a little bit. Um, so I'm going to start all over. So I did the whole wizard. And I'm just going to check and make sure my settings are still in there because I kicked out of it. When you hit position, I'm going to go over on this side because I forgot this side's not a quarter of an inch. So if you want to undo, just do control Z's, um, then come back and put it on this side. It'll probably be a little easier for the math we're about to do. Control Z doesn't. We got to get out of your command first and then it will. Okay. Um, I want to pick on the surface. That's what's asking me to click off to create that 3D sketch. So what SOLIDWORKS is gonna do is when we click here, it's gonna pick a center point, it's gonna draw a circle and it's gonna draw a perpendicular cone to create this hole. It's also gonna do a revolve cut, which you don't know how to do yet. So it's gonna do like four things all at once. So when I pick on the surface, there's this, the diameter of my oh. hole. I just need to place that somewhere on this plane. I could jump over here, I could put it here, 
but I need it to be on, let's do the right side. I know I told you left, but if you put it on the right, you'll have a little better look with the math. So I click it right there. And then if I, I can right click and say I'm done selecting, and then I can hit the green check mark, you could skip the right click step and just go check mark. If I turn this, this is the drawing that SOLIDWORKS made. They made the depth, the angle of the, the drill bit, the length of the threads, and then they did a revolve cut to make the circle. All that was done by SOLIDWORKS. So here's my hole. If I expand that out and I go back to my front view, I need to position the center of this. I do that with my sketch that's on the top, the, the first sketch. So I right click, eyeball, go up one more, edit sketch, boom. There's my little dot. You with me so far? What? <laughs> what? Take it back. Back how far? <laughs> yeah, I need to say that just a little bit louder. How do you do the dimension from the center of this circle to the side? Okay, you have to edit this sketch right here. Okay. Right yeah, edit. so yeah, let me escape here. Okay. Oh, okay, so if there's my circle right there, right? You have to expand out the three other things that happened inside that 8-32 taper hole. You have to find the top sketch, right click, eyeball, edit sketch. That's the one you want, right above the eyeball. So you want us to press eyeball and edit sketch? Not the eyeball both. The eyeball lets you see it. I'm just saying go above the eyeball. So if you write, if I hit the eyeball, everything goes invisible. You can't see it. That's just, that just lets you see things. So if I want to go above the eyeball and hit edit sketch. If I go over, it's edit sketch plane. And then there's a zoom to selection. There's a, but there'll be, this whole thing will fill up depending on where you're at, but you need to find edit sketch. When I do that, I get this little asterisk, the little center point. That's where the smart dimensions come from the bottom to the asterisk is 0.125. And from the side to the asterisk, because this is a full quarter of an inch, that's 0.125. Okay, now when you get both of those done, both of those are done, go up to the top, it says exit sketch. Just click on that and everything's where it should be. Perfectly centered in that spot. So it's up a quarter of an eighth of an inch from the bottom and over from this side an eighth of an inch. This side isn't, isn't a full quarter, so the math's a little different there. Then he, well, yeah, hit the green check mark, then hit exit sketch in the top right hand corner. Okay, sweet. All right. Now, if you guys will all position your column so you can see the full top, all four of these edges that make up the top of the column. We're going to do what's called an, an array. And an array or a linear pattern allows us to take one thing and reproduce it lots of times. So often mm -hmm. with bolts and screws, we'll have a pattern that we follow. So we might have, if we're putting up a street light, for example, there are eight one inch bolts used to hold up a street light, typically. Um, they fall around an octagonal pattern and there's tightened every other one, so we get the thing up straight. Um, then they put Loctite on those so people don't steal them, because that used to be a problem, um, which is not good when you steal someone's light bulb. All right, so is everybody at this point now before I move on? I don't want to lose anybody, because it gets a little complicated. It's not complicated, you just have to follow the steps.
Riley, what do you need? I need to see the whole thing. <laughs> um, I don't know how to the screw. Like start from the very beginning of the whole wizard a third time. <laughs> really, Riley? Really, 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 Riley? Okay, Riley, this is just for you, man. All right, click on whole wizard. We come down, make sure an ANSI inch, bottom tap hole, size is 8 32. Is that correct on yours? The end condition is 0.69. The thread condition is 0 0.44. 2B. So far, so good? <laughs> Okay, then just have to pick your position over on the right-hand side, lower corner. <laughs> now, Riley, since you brought that up, if you think your, your feature is not correct, this is gonna blow your freaking mind. When you come over to where the feature is, the name, here, A-32 taper hole, if I right-click, find the eyeball that's now blocked out, and go up, it's no longer edit sketch, it's edit feature. And you can oh. click on edit feature and it will take you into your whole wizard and you can change your settings. So that same location, that's why I go up above the eyeball, that same location will be either edit feature or edit sketch. Okay then. Okay, you've clicked, um, Kaden. Uh, I know you sent this to me privately, but if you have two circles, that means you've clicked twice. Um, so I will go ahead and make that mistake. And since I don't want to, I'm gonna do it anyway. You have two circles like this, right? They're overlapping. Now I got snowmen. No, it's not like that. Um, you have the wrong um, settings then in your um, in your set in your whole wizard settings. Is you're showing uh, either well, there's two things that could be. Either you're not straight on with the view in the front view, so you're seeing it at an angle, or you've got a counter bore setting on your um, whole wizard. Now I've got to undo that. So here I'm going to do. I'm going to edit my feature. I got two circles where I don't want them. Right click, edit feature. I'm gonna take this guy right here. Uh, I'm gonna to go into the sketch. Come down, find this guy and delete it. It's a sketch. Okay. Um, Okay, yeah, you gotta make sure when you're doing things that you're straight on the view. Um, and that's really kind of important that you have the right perspective on things. So, Kate, while that's kind of frustrating, thank you for pointing that out. If, if you're working at an angle and you're placing things, you'll see all those elements that make it up. All right, let's get ourselves back squared away, front view, so we can see all of the top. And here we go. Okay, features tab. Come across the top to find linear pattern. Find linear pattern. Okay, go ahead and click on linear pattern. And we're going to get a whole bunch of matrices, but they're gonna be fun because there's no math involved. You just have to put the numbers in. Okay. Yay. Yay. Okay, typically direction one is gonna be your X value. Direction two is gonna be your Y value. So we're gonna put direction one in first and we just click in this box so it's active. Even though it is blue, I always just click there to make sure the computer's registered what I'm doing. And then they come over and pick this bottom edge right below where I, my feature is. It can be the whole thing or just this little piece right here, it doesn't matter. So they give me an arrow and that arrow defaults to the right generally. I need it to go left because I need the whole 
over here on my left side. So if you've got the hole on the left side, you need to go right. Makes sense. To change that, here's that uh, reverse area again, right next to edge one. I can toggle that and change that arrow. So make sure your arrows face in the direction you want the next hole to be. Now, if this comes down uh, here, yeah. Question? Did you do the boundary again? Or yeah. Okay, so I click on linear pattern. I want direction one. It needs to be an edge that is what I want X to be. If I pick, I could pick this edge and make X vertical, but I want the one that's going horizontal. So I usually go as close to the object I'm copying, and I want to pick an edge that's that, that direction. And because distance is relative, I could pick this edge here. But I, I try and stay close so I could do any of these right along here. Okay, and I want my direction going to the right. Now, the next is the distance. So I'm gonna give you the distance here. Hopefully I remembered it all. I need you to put in 0.875, but don't hit enter yet. And I want you to minus 0.125 from that. So when you put anything into the distance um, fields, that's also a calculator. You can put in, uh, you can put in calculus into these suckers. So in this case, I want 0.875 minus 0.125 because I'm going from this edge to the center is on the drawing. So I wanna make sure I have that. Now I get 0.75. So make sure you have 0.75. And you could have done that in your head, but I just want you to know you can put math in there. The next one is the number of times it occurs. One is not an option. I've already got one. If I put one in there, nothing happens. So you need at least two, and it will start to show here, but not till I tell it what I'm doing next. So let's go down now to direction two. I'm gonna go up, so I'm pick up the right side edge for direction two. Nothing's happening yet. The distance here, I can get that to highlight just and back it out. The mouse will be um, for this is I want 1.875 minus 0.125 because this whole length is two. So I should get 1.75. Notice it says one, change the one to two. Now you can type it or you can hit the arrow and just step it up. What's that? I, I didn't catch the question. How do you move the hole? How do you move the hole? How do, what you have to put dimensions on it, Wyatt. That was like mm -hmm. ten steps ago. <laughs> um, when oh. you go into your um, feature, you have to expand it out, and you have to right-click on the first sketch, and edit that sketch to put the dimensions on it. That's the asterisk part. Thanks, Mufasa. Um, okay, thanks, Wyatt. Um, are you are you in the class? Or are you at home? Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't catch that. The chat's kind of a little teeny tiny window, so I have room to draw. So I'm sorry I missed that. Okay, glad you got it. All right. Now nothing's happening on my screen. I've got an arrow here, and I've got an arrow at the top there so i know my directions are right i've got two happening in the x and two happening in the y now i need to pick the feature and the faces okay i only need to pick one okay so there's two ways you can do this i could just pick this box i could go to my my tree structure and select it here or i can just go and turn it to the side and pick on the inside of the hole i have once i pick the inside of the hole I should get four holes equally spaced in the exact position I need them. Okay, so you, either of those methods will work. So you want to make sure you pick each of those. Let me get rid of that. Wait, redo that real quick. What's that? Redo that. 
Okay. So when you get into your hole with your, your linear pattern, first thing I did is pick edge one. That's this edge right here where this arrow is. So you just pick an edge that represents the X direction. We're on features and faces. How do you do that? Okay. Feature and faces here. I can either pick it from my directory tree, my feature tree, or just turn your drawing and pick the inside of the hole. So if I pick this hole here, it's going to try and make copies of that too. So you just pick, pick the hole that you have drawn. So you just want to pick the hole that you have. Did you get it? Yeah. Okay. When you have that all to your liking, hit the green check mark. And there are your four little holes. Yeah, baby. Okay. That's, that's done. This is a done drawing. Okay. Save this as column so you can find it. I got to figure out where I'm going to save the sucker now. So that should be on your drive. Just one second. It's what? Yeah. Okay, what do you need me to do again? Do the linear spacing. Okay. All right. What I'm going to do, why well, I'm going to come back in here and I'll show you what my, my settings are. Okay. So here's my linear pattern right here on this side. If I right click and edit that feature, so I have my, at my right edge is across the bottom. That's at 0.75 is the distance, and then there's two of them. My Y directions on the right hand side, it's at 1.75, also two. Then I just select my feature that I want to have copied. And then I hit the green check mark. Can I start from the beginning when the power went out? No. I can't do that. I, I, I don't want to go through that again. That was that was that was sad. Okay. And I'm not gonna do that again. All right. So we're here. All right. Will you guys open up your base drawing now? <laughs> Yeah, sometimes I will say no. Just do it faster. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> um, not if you were doing it right. <laughs> All right, base drawings opened up. You get a rebuild there. Okay. Um, will you check and make sure you only have twos in for your number of items that show up there, Parker? Uh, usually when you get a rebuild error, it's um, usually because you're trying to cut a hole in space and there's nothing there. Did that, did that help, Parker? Okay, good. All right, here's our base drawing. We're gonna put a threaded hole in this, just like we did, but it's a much larger hole. Yo, we don't have, some of us don't have the base. Uh, Why not? Because we just, I don't know, we don't have it. Well, we finished it in class. This is yeah, the I lost like days that's back. Like, and and you didn't tell Miss Wise to stop and and. Well, she doesn't. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it was okay. All right. Uh, Sayonara. Okay. Can you just do it for us? 
do the whole thing again for you? Yeah. Oh. Fast. Fast. <laughs> okay. You asked for it. <laughs> okay. Oh, Hang on. Let me go and look at my numbers here. Here are the numbers. So I'm going to pull that up so I can see them because. Um, all right, you guys asked for it. We're going to run through this again real quick. How much time we got left in class, guys? Uh, seven minutes. No. Oh, no. Uh, 10, 14. 17 minutes. No, it's 10, 14. Until 10, 14. Okay. So, uh, no, 17 plus 40 minutes. Wait, don't we have 17 plus 40 minutes. So we have uh, 57. Oh, yeah, 57 minutes. They all never have an hour. You got 10 15 minutes, though. You got 10 15? Yes, yes, that is correct. They are not. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's two minutes. They all have a red Mm -hmm. All right, guys. So I've got basically 10 minutes to do a whole hour and a half's worth of drawing. Okay, hey, but you ready? Like, some of us are halfway, so. Okay, so I'll start a new one, okay? Okay, let's see you go. So if you need to, take a screenshot real quick of the numbers, because this is going to go fast, and we might have to finish this out on Thursday, okay? Which is fine. Oh, so sorry. The drawing's also in your course. Dang. Ready? Okay, here go, we go. go. So I'm going to start a new part file. I'm going to start a sketch. That sketch is going to be on my top plane. I'm going to start with a line. I'm going to draw what looks to be a representation of that shape as close as I can recollect without worrying about details or being too precise because I really don't care at this point. I'm just creating the shape. And so I just want to get close to it. And that's where I'm going to start. Doesn't look anything like it. Now, one thing I am gonna fix is I've got two perpendicular constraints. I'm gonna take those off, uh, mainly because they'll cause me some grief. So I'm gonna delete that relationship. Get it to delete. So I'm gonna come over here to the side, delete that one out, delete that one out. Okay, now I need to make sure that horizontals are horizontals, verticals are verticals. This guy needs to be horizontal. So I'm gonna come in and force that to a horizontal line. This one has to always be vertical. And that's the first thing. Then smart dimensions. From the top to the bottom, the total height is three and a half. This side is going to be two and a half. That makes this distance here one. Now I want this side and this side to be the same. So I turn my smart dimensions off, select the line that's correct on the right, hold the control key down, select the line on the other side, and I make them equal because equality is important. So these are now the exact same length. These two guys need to be the same lined up as well. Um, the easy way to do that is gonna take a center line and then connect point A to point B. Then I'm gonna take that wonderful center line, select it, and then force it horizontal. And that makes those lines always in alignment. Back to my smart dimension, from this side to the inside of my slot, that value was 0.933. Oh, which makes me a little cross-eyed here. So I gotta grab this little guy and stretch him back 
trim smart dimensions off and untangle my line. And then my smart dimension goes from M point to M point, and this value is 0.69. And that creates this first side. I need that to be the same on both. So here's how I'm gonna make that happen. Smart dimension off. Select this little teeny tiny guy here. Control key, corresponding symmetry side on the opposite side, and I force those to be equal. Woohoo, that sets them equal. That sets the angles equal. I now need to get the total width back to smart dimension, left to right. Total width on this is 2.875. Enter that in. Oh, another jigsaw puzzle. So now I'm going to pull this guy over. Smart dimension has to go off first. Pull it over, get the endpoint. Fetch that apart. Need this depth. This depth is one inch. I need it to be lined up with this point. Uh, it's gonna be easier to throw a smart dimension on there. And from top to bottom, pull it off the sides. So it's not so hard to see. Should be one. Okay, that's the top shape. Now to put the bottom in. Um, now this is all ready. I'm gonna do a center line right down the middle from top to bottom. That line didn't stick. I'm going way fast. Bottom. Let's see the line. There it goes. Okay, so we got a line there. Two circles on there. One in the middle right here. One a little higher up. Not on this midpoint though, because that would be bad. So put a little guy, come on, little guy, right there. Smart dimension those, this first guy, he's gonna be 5 eighths of an inch, 0.625. I'm um, gonna draw a center line across the top to get him in the right spot. And that's gonna be right at that intersection point. And then do a smart dimension from the center line to the base. That is 0.81. That pulls everything down, which is cool. And then do another, um, then do an offset, because we did offsets before, actually, let me get sizes. Let's do this little guy here first. The size of that is 0.266. And to the center of that, from that center to the base is 1.06. Puts that in the right position. I do an offset entities. I'm gonna do a bi-directional, take the chain off. I wanna do 0.625 divided by two. That's 3.125, select the center line, that puts lines on each side. I check that off, go to trim entities, trim the closest is the tool I'm gonna to use, snip these guys down to where they belong, which means I have to clip this one on this side because of the center line, take the bottom out on both sides, Clear out the base. So let's say you're breaking apart. I lost this line here. Not sure why. That's okay. We'll fix that. Line here to here. Make sure that's horizontal. And um, then make those. And this because we'll make sure these line up. Because I'm a little questioning it. And it's not gray yet. This line control. This line. Those will be collinear. So I was alignment, and I've got a gap somewhere right there. See that little hangnail? That's a bad deal. So then trim off the hangnail. I'm now shaded. All's good with the world. Life's amazing. Features, extreme boss base. The distance on the blind offset is one. Pick the state area. I check that off, because that's now done. Want the edges to be all nice and pretty. So I go to my features tab, go to fill it, change that to chamfer. My distance is gonna be a 16th of an inch, 0 0.0625. It's gonna stay at the 45 degree angle. And I wanna pick edges. I want that edge and that edge. But I put the preview on so you can see what I'm doing. Across the top as well. Do the same on the opposite side. 
Do not do the parts, the slots. Slots do not get them. That'd be very expensive. Check that off. Base is done. Okay. Now what we need to do today. We good? We got eight minutes. Can we do it? All right, here we go. We gotta swing this around to this other side here. So if this is my front, it means I need the back. And I'm gonna work in this area right here. Okay, what size hole? Does everybody have that drawing opened up? Anybody open up the drawing for that? Is this being recorded? Yes, it is. When will you post it? Um, as soon as I get it edited down and converted to YouTube. So it'll be this evening. And then is it on Canvas? And then I'll post it in the announcements on Canvas with the other ones. Well, Will that be good? Okay. All right, let me open up the base drawing, get the drawings. So we then put a hole, we use the hole wizard again. And the drawing that we then do is, is 3 eighths of an inch, 0.375. It's got a 16 UNC, it's another 2B, and it's uh, three in there, three quarters of an inch deep, okay? Simple stuff. So here we go. And they go to the whole wizard. It's an almost moved to the same, it's a, it's a self-tapping hole again. So straight tap. So we click on that. The size, is gonna be a little different. If we look, you're, we need to find a 3 8 inch and right here, the 3 8 inch dash 16. That's what we want right there. 3 8 dash 16. And then we're gonna go um, in our depth is gonna be 0.94. And our thread is be 0.75. It's a CB class. And then we're going to do position. And I'm just going to go ahead and pick this area right here in the middle of the, the slot. And it's going to go right there. Now I'm going to do this in a little differently. If you are parked along State Street, please come out and remove your vehicle. Thank you. Okay. Now so this is now positioned. I'm just going to type that off. There's the hole, but it's not where I want it. What I'd like you to do is go and do a sketch. And we're gonna do um, a new sketch on this surface, right where the hole is. Mm. Wanna do it. Okay, and I want you to do a center line from one corner to the opposite corner. It's the diagonal center line. And then what you'll see is this sketch is now below your hole. So exit the sketch. Now I want you to move that sketch above. So it's then probably easier to pull the other one down, but I wanna switch those directions. So I'm just gonna take the sketch, get a little crooked arrow, I want to put it right above the hole. So a hook happens before the hole. Just kind of drag it, move it up. And we'll probably have to do this again. We got four minutes. Okay, now I'm going to position my hole in the exact spot. To do that, I'm going to expand out the hole, go to the sketch, top sketch inside that, right click, edit that sketch, and then grab it, and then put it right in the center of that diagonal. What did I just do? I centered it in the space. Then I hit the check mark, X the sketch, now it's done. Okay, that's, that's how I would finish out the base drawing. Is a, and if, again, if you, would, if you do the diagonal first, it's a little easier uh, than moving it, but you can move your sketches around and change the order in which things are drawn, which is really helpful. Okay, um, so yeah, I'll get this posted. 
Um, I'll start editing as soon as class is over. Deadline for ambassadors. Deadline is this Friday, May 14, 2020. So please log on to the GTI website if you are interested in applying. What's up? Any questions? We've got two minutes for questions. How come it says operations is front office like configured for the rest of the application? Okay, you got to say that a little slower so the mic can pick you up. The operation system is not presently configured to run this application. You've lost the network. You've not connected to the internet anymore. Uh, <laughs> yay. Um, Boo! We okay. don't like that. So try and save it to the desktop and see if that'll work instead of your drive. Is it bad that this happens every time this is going to yeah, it is. Will you um, um, will you have asked the substitute put a take a sticky note from off the top of my desk and put on that computer, and um, so I can get a work order in on that. How are you going to access this at home? What's that? Great, sounds good. Okay. Yeah, can you put a sticky note on his computer? So we can get a work order in to fix the internet connection on that. Are you sitting right on the, let's see which way would you be? Are you on the south side of the column or the north side? I'm on the, the west side of the column. You're on the yeah. west side? I don't think that's possible. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, one of those. Just stick one of those on his computer. Yeah, I did it. Okay, thank you. Okay, so it, you can't, you, the back wall is to the west, and so you're either north or south of the column. Are you on? Okay, I'll get a work order in. Okay, guys, go and get your work saved. The bell's in the ring here pretty quick. This building's turned, I forgot. Okay, all of these part files are in the, the technical drawing two course under Arbor Press. There's a link on the homepage to them. They're all individual PDF files, so you can find them all on Canvas, yes. And if you uh, drew it in um, metric, just switch it to IPS and go in and just edit the sketch and change the dimension values. Dimension. Or scale it. We can do a scale by 25.4 as well. So don't worry. If you got it drawn correctly, but just the wrong numbers, we can fix that. Okay. All right. Not a big deal. Okay, uh, make sure you shut your computers off when you guys leave. Yo, doctor. Yeah. A lot of people's computers say error. Oh my gosh, are you serious? That's probably from birth. Oh, okay. Can you, um, okay, here's what we're then. Is it for the column or the base drawing? Or both? It's the, it just don't says you have to press OK, but it press OK and it just keeps coming through. Okay, tell you what, I'm going to email all of you the base and the column that we just did. I'll send you my copies. Okay, so if you're in the class today, you're, you're covered. Don't worry about your units being wrong. Uh, I'm, I'm going to provide them to all of you. I'll just put them in the Canvas course for you so you can download them on Thursday. Okay, I got you covered. Okay, so are you done? One so, one one. Just go ahead and shut down. Don't worry about saving. I've got you covered. That makes sense. Yeah, so I will provide you the drawings, okay? Bro, 
Does that make sense? Or any questions on that? I know, two minutes. There's a lot you can do in two minutes. Yeah, you bet. We'll see you on Thursday, guys. Thank <laughs> you.